Welcome to this Unity 2D tutorial. Today, we're going to build a game inspired by hill climb racing from scratch. We'll cover car physics, terrain generation, controls, and layered backgrounds. Let's begin. Create a new 2D project in Unity. Import your assets, car body and wheels, player head and body, UI elements if needed later. Create folders to stay organized, sprites, scripts, and prefabs. I've already prepared a list of sprites, including the car body, wheels, terrain, and background layers, and we're going to bring them into Unity. Now let's take a moment to properly configure the terrain texture we're going to use for the ground surface. Select your terrain sprite in the project window, and in the inspector, we're going to change two important settings. First, set the mesh type to full rectangle. This tells Unity to treat the entire rectangular area of the texture including any transparent pixels, as part of the sprite's bounds. This is especially important if you plan to stretch or tile the texture along long surfaces. If we leave it set to tight, Unity might crop or deform the edges, which can cause visual issues when repeating the sprite. Next, set the wrap mode to repeat. By default, textures are clamped, meaning the edges are stretched if you scale them. But when we set it to repeat, the texture can tile, or repeat, seamlessly across the x-axis. This is exactly what we want for terrain that scrolls or stretches over distance. Finally, don't forget to hit apply after making these changes. This small setup step makes a big difference in how clean and scalable your terrain looks in-game. Let's start setting up our vehicle. First, create a new empty game object and name it Vehicle. Then, drag the car body and the player sprites into it. This helps keep things organized and makes it easier to move the whole vehicle as one object. Next, position the player's body and head on top of the car so it looks like the character is sitting inside or driving. Finally, adjust the position of the wheels. Make sure they're aligned properly under the car so that they rotate correctly and the car stands evenly on the terrain. Create a new sprite, name it Ground. Then add a 2D collider, either box or polygon. Collider 2D so the vehicle can interact with it. That's your ground set up and ready for physics. Select the car game object and add a polygon collider 2D. This gives us a more accurate collision shape than a box. Then click Edit Collider and adjust the points to fit the car body closely. This will improve stability and collision accuracy during gameplay. Now, let's create a 2D physics material. Right-click in the project window, go to Create. Physics 2D material and name it No Friction. Set the friction value to zero and leave bounciness at zero. Then, assign this material to the car's Polygon Collider 2D. This prevents the car from sticking to surfaces and ensures smoother movement. Select both tire game objects and add two components. First, a rigid body 2D so the wheels respond to gravity and physics. Second, a circle collider 2D to define their shape for collisions. Next, create a new 2D physics material. Right-click in the project window. Choose Create. Physics 2D material and name it Tire Friction. Set its friction to 2, then assign it to both wheel colliders. This gives the tires enough grip to climb and brake properly on slopes. Set the mass to 2 to give it realistic weight and change interpolate to interpolate. This helps smooth out movement, especially when the camera follows the car. Now, when we hit the play button, we can see that the car collides with the ground correctly. Now, let's add two wheel joint 2D components to the vehicle game object. One for each tire. In each joint, set the connected body to the corresponding tire rigid body 2D. Then move the anchor point so it aligns with the center of each tire. To get realistic suspension, I've found that a damping ratio of 0.35 and a frequency of 3 work really well. These values help absorb bumps and provide a smooth ride. We'll create a new script and name it Drive Car. Inside the class, we'll add two rigid body 2D references, one for each tire, and a float variable called Speed to control how fast the car accelerates. In the update method, we'll read the horizontal input using input.getAxis. Then in fixed update, we'll apply torque to the wheels. 
we'll use the negative direction of the input to match the car's movement, multiplied by speed and time dot, fixed delta time for smooth physics. Let's save the script, then select the vehicle game object and assign the front and rear tyres to the corresponding slots in the drive car script. Now hit play, and you should be able to move the car forward and backward using the horizontal axis, either the arrow keys or A and D on the keyboard. We also want to allow the player to slightly rotate the car while it's in the air. To do this, we'll add a rigid body 2D reference for the car itself and a rotation speed variable. Inside Fixed Update, we'll apply torque to the car's rigid body based on the same horizontal input multiplied by rotation speed. Then assign the rigid body of the car in the inspector, and let's test. Now the car can tilt slightly left and right when airborne, giving the player more control. Let's give the player's head a bit of natural movement. Start by selecting the player's body and add a capsule collider 2D to it. This will handle the main collision shape. Then select the head, add a circle collider 2D and also attach a hinge joint 2D. Set the head's rigid body 2D mass to 0.5 and set the gravity scale to negative 0.1. This gives it a light, slightly floating effect. In the hinge joint 2D, set the connected rigid body to the main vehicle game object. Enable use limits, set the angle limits to around plus or minus 30 degrees and adjust the anchor down to the neck area so it pivots naturally when the car moves or crashes. This small touch adds life and motion to your character without needing full ragdoll physics. Now let's make the camera follow the player. Create a new script and name it Follow Camera. We'll use this script to smoothly track the player's movement while keeping the camera stable. Attach this script to your main camera, assign the vehicle or the player's main transform as the target, and set an offset that fits your scene layout. Now, when you hit play, the camera will follow the car smoothly. Let's add a nice touch to the camera. When the player is moving fast, the camera will zoom out slightly to give a better view. And when the speed drops, it will zoom back in. To do this, we'll modify our follow camera script to read the player's velocity, then adjust the camera's orthographic size accordingly.
Attach this updated script to the camera, assign the player's rigid body 2D to the target RB field, and adjust the min zoom and max zoom to fit your game's feel. Now, the faster the player moves, the wider the view, and it zooms back in when slowing down, making the experience feel more responsive and dynamic. Now let's create a custom 2D sprite shape profile to generate our terrain. In the project window, right-click and choose Create. 2D Sprite Shape Profile. Name it Ground Profile. Open the profile and set the angle range from 68 to negative 68. This controls how the texture wraps around slopes. For the fill texture, assign the ground terrain sprite you want to use. Then remove the default sprite at the bottom. We won't need it for now. Next, let's create the actual ground object. In the hierarchy, go to 2D Object, Sprite Shape, and name it Ground. Then in the inspector, assign the ground profile we just created to the Sprite Shape controller. This connects the shape definition to the object. At this point, we could start adding points manually to design the terrain. But instead, let's make things smarter. We're going to generate the ground procedurally using a custom script. This will allow us to create endless or randomized terrain with just a few parameters. So let's create a new C-sharp script and name it Environment Generator. We'll attach this script to an empty game object and it will handle generating points dynamically along the sprite shape to build our level. Now let's take a closer look at how our terrain is being generated procedurally. We've created a script called Environment Generator and it's designed to work directly inside the Unity editor using Execute in Edit mode. This means we can see changes in real time without needing to hit the play button. At the top of the script, we reference the sprite shape controller, which is attached to our ground object. That's what lets us control the terrain's spline points. We then define a few public parameters. Level length, which controls how many points make up the terrain. X spacing, which sets the distance between each point. Y amplitude, which controls how tall or bumpy the hills are. And curve smoothness which determines how smooth or sharp the transitions are between points. Inside the onValidate method, which runs automatically in the editor whenever we change a value, we clear the existing spline and begin generating new points. For each point, we use Perlin noise to generate a smooth random height value, then insert that point into the spline. This gives us natural looking hills and slopes. We also set the tangent mode to continuous and adjust the tangents to make the curves smooth and flowing, rather than jagged or angular. At the end, we add two additional points that extend down to negative 10 on the y-axis. These points close off the terrain from below, forming a solid surface that the player can drive across. This approach gives us a clean and flexible way to generate terrain procedurally, and we can regenerate it instantly just by tweaking the values in the inspector. Now that we've generated our terrain visually, we need to make it physically interactive, so the car can drive on it properly. To do this, we'll add an Edge Collider 2D to the ground object. At first, Unity will add a default straight line as the collider. To update it based on the sprite shape, go to the Sprite Shape Controller component and look for the option called Update Collider. Try unchecking it and then checking it again. This forces Unity to refresh the shape and automatically align the Edge Collider to the terrain. Now, the collider should match the hills and slopes we've created, but in some cases it might sit slightly above or below the surface visually, 
depending on the fill texture or how your profile is set up. To fix this, you can adjust the offset on the edge collider. Try small values like 0.05 or negative 0.05 on the y-axis until the collider sits exactly where it should. Now, let's set up the fuel system interface for the player. Start by creating a new canvas and name it HUD Canvas. In the canvas settings, set the UI scale mode to scale with screen size. This ensures the UI looks consistent across all resolutions. Inside the canvas, create a new UI, image and name it Fuel Bar. Choose a solid color like green and assign a simple square sprite. Now, change the image type to Filled. Set the Fill method to Horizontal and choose to fill from the left. This gives us a progress bar effect that we can control through code to show how much fuel the player has left. At this point, our fuel UI is ready and working visually. So let's jump into the script and connect it to the gameplay. Now, let's create the logic behind our fuel system. First, in the hierarchy, create an empty game object and name it Game Manager. Then, create a new script called Fuel Controller and attach it to the Game Manager. Inside the script, we'll make it a singleton, so other scripts can access it easily later on. We'll also reference the fuel bar image and add a float variable to control the fuel drain speed. In the start method, we set the current fuel to the maximum value and immediately update the UI to reflect that. Then we use invoke repeating to drain fuel every second, reducing the value and updating the fuel bar accordingly. Now go ahead and assign the fuel bar image to the fuel controller in the inspector. When you hit play, you'll see the fuel slowly draining over time and the UI updating to match. That's it for this part of the hill climb racing style game in Unity 2D. We now have terrain generation, a working vehicle with physics and a functional fuel system connected to the UI. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions for the next steps. And if you'd like access to the full Unity project, feel free to drop a comment. I'll be happy to share the source code with you.